Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside, and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. The margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves, they want to tell you you can't. Want something? Go get it. Here. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You have to believe that something different can happen. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. That most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Deep down, dig deep down, ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy, no matter how crazy it may sound to the people. Make a choice, like you just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. Why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? see why, why, why can't I do that? What did you say to the kid? It ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Get up. Get up. Get up. And don't ever give up. We can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. I don't do well in math. You're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. If you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. Don't cry to give up. Cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You're already in pain. You're already hurt. Get a reward from it. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not point the finger saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Because every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. So now you got to go out and show them that I'm a different creature. Now! I'm gonna 
will show you how great I am. The 17th chapter of St. Luke is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power, the power to create machines, the power to create happiness, you the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Now, what are you going to do? Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. Sir, they can cut the chain off the door, but they can't make us play. We've decided we're going to finish what you started, sir. Yeah, so leave us be, coach. We got shit to do, sir. <laughs> Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. Our presence automatically liberates others. Sir, I just want to say thank you. You saved my life. Your hard work, I used to hate you. When you called my name, I heard it but ran away from you. When I knew you were coming, I used to hide from you. When you influenced others to talk to me, I quickly made excuses to get away from you. Afraid of the pain because I didn't want to get hurt. Afraid to fail, so I didn't even try. And afraid of your name because of what you have done to others. Who do you think you are? Making me so afraid of who you are. Reflection in the mirror, shadow behind me, I take one step and you're still ahead of me. Sweat in my face, tears in my eyes. I keep on going, I heard you tell no lies. You turn the poor to rich, F to A's. Is there anything that you can't do? Now look at me, you made me who I am today. And because of you, I have this never losing, never giving up attitude. Quitting? That's not in my vocabulary. When they quit, I keep going. When they sleep, I work harder. When they say that I can't and count me out, I show them that I can. When I tell them about my dreams and they laugh, I make sure I laugh last. I'm a dream chaser. That means I chase my dreams and no one else's. Only I can defeat me me against this work you put on me. There's no losing. I will not lose. Stop it now.
work. My dad was right about you. You do pay off. And because of that, I love you. How can I not? I'm no longer hiding from you. I'm waiting for you. Matter of fact, where are you? I need you. Because in hard work, I trust. Look me in the eye. It's okay if you're scared. So am I. But we're scared for different reasons. I'm scared of what I won't become. And you're scared of what I could become. Look at me. I won't let myself end where I started. I won't let myself finish where I began. I know what is within me. Even if you can't see it yet. Look me in the eyes. I have something more important than courage. I have patience. I will become what I know I am. Thank you. I'm uh, honored to be with you today for your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. Truth be told, uh, I never graduated from college, and uh, this is the closest I've ever gotten to a college graduation. <laughs> today, I want to tell you three stories from my life. That's it. No big deal. Just three stories. The first story is about connecting the dots. I dropped out of Reed College after the first six months, but then stayed around as a drop-in for another 18 months or so before I really quit. So why'd I drop out? It started before I was born. My biological mother was a young, unwed graduate student, and she decided to put me up for adoption. She felt very strongly that I should be adopted by college graduates, so everything was all set for me to be adopted at birth by a lawyer and his wife. Except that when I popped out, they decided at the last minute that they really wanted a girl. So my parents, who were on a waiting list, got a call in the middle of the night asking, we've got an unexpected baby boy, do you want him? They said, of course. My biological mother found out later that my mother had never graduated from college and that my father had never graduated from high school. She refused to sign the final adoption papers. She only relented a few months later when my parents promised that I would go to college. This was the start in my life. And 17 years later, I did go to college. But I naively chose a college that was almost as expensive as Stanford and all of my working class parents' savings were being spent on my college tuition. After six months, I couldn't see the value in it. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and no idea how college was going to help me figure it out. And here I was, spending all of the money my parents had saved their entire life. So I decided to drop out and trust that it would all work out okay. It was pretty scary at the time, but looking back, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. The minute I dropped out, I could stop taking the required classes that didn't interest me and begin dropping in on the ones that looked far more interesting. It wasn't all romantic. I didn't have a dorm room, so I slept on the floor in friends' rooms. I returned Coke bottles for the five cent deposits to buy food with. And I would walk the seven miles across town every Sunday night to get one good meal a week at the Hare Krishna temple. I loved it. And much of what I stumbled into by following my curiosity and intuition turned out to be priceless later on. Let me give you one example. Reed College at that time offered perhaps the best calligraphy instruction in the country. Throughout the campus, every poster, every label on every drawer was beautifully hand calligraphed. Because I had dropped out and didn't have to take the normal classes, I decided to take a calligraphy class to learn how to do this. I learned about serif and sans serif typefaces, about varying the amount of space between different letter combinations, 
about what makes great typography great. It was beautiful, historical, artistically subtle in a way that science can't capture, and I found it fascinating. None of this had even a hope of any practical application in my life. But 10 years later, when we were designing the first Macintosh computer, it all came back to me. And we designed it all into the Mac. It was the first computer with beautiful typography. If I had never dropped in on that single course in college, the Mac would have never had multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. And since Windows just copied the Mac, it's likely that no personal computer would have them. If I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class, and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. My second story is about love and loss. I was lucky. I found what I loved to do early in life. Waz and I started Apple in my parents' garage when I was 20. We worked hard, and in 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of us in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. We just released our finest creation, the Macintosh, a year earlier, and I'd just turned 30. And then I got fired. How can you get fired from a company you started? Well, as Apple grew, we hired someone who I thought was very talented to run the company with me. And for the first year or so, things went well. But then our visions of the future began to diverge, and eventually we had a falling out. When we did, our board of directors sided with him. And so at 30, I was out, and very publicly out. What had been the focus of my entire adult life was gone, and it was devastating. I really didn't know what to do for a few months. I felt that I had let the previous generation of entrepreneurs down, that I had dropped the baton as it was being passed to me. I met with David Packard and Bob Noyce, and tried to apologize for screwing up so badly. I was a very public failure, and I even thought about running away from the valley. But something slowly began to dawn on me. I still loved what I did. The turn of events at Apple had not changed that one bit. I'd been rejected, but I was still in love. And so I decided to start over. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. During the next five years, I started a company named Next, another company named Pixar, and fell in love with an amazing woman who would become my wife. Pixar went on to create the world's first computer animated feature film, Toy Story, and is now the most successful animation studio in the world. In a remarkable turn of events, Apple bought Next, and I returned to Apple, and the technology we developed at Next is at the heart of Apple's current renaissance. And Lorene and I have a wonderful family together. I'm pretty sure none of this would have happened if I hadn't been fired from Apple. It was awful tasting medicine, but I guess the patient needed it. Sometime life, sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love, and that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking, and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking. Don't settle.
My third story is about death. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me. And since then, for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. About a year ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. I had a scan at 7.30 in the morning and it clearly showed a tumor on my pancreas. I didn't even know what a pancreas was. The doctors told me this was almost certainly a type of cancer that is incurable and that I should expect to live no longer than three to six months. My doctor advised me to go home and get my affairs in order, which is doctor's code for prepare to die. It means to try and tell your kids everything. You thought you'd have the next 10 years to tell them in just a few months. It means to make sure everything is buttoned up so that it will be as easy as possible for your family. It means to say your goodbyes. I live with that diagnosis all day. Later that evening, I had a biopsy where they stuck an endoscope down my throat, through my stomach and into my intestines, put a needle into my pancreas and got a few cells from the tumor. I was sedated, but my wife who was there told me that when they viewed the cells under a microscope, the doctors started crying because it turned out to be a very rare form of pancreatic cancer that is curable with surgery. I had the surgery and thankfully I'm fine now. <clears throat> this was the closest I've been to facing death and I hope it's the closest I get for a few more decades. Having lived through it, I can now say this to you with a bit more certainty than when death was a useful but purely intellectual concept. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet, death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be, because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, the new is you. But someday, not too long from now, you will gradually become the old and be cleared away. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it's quite true. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. When I was young, there was an amazing publication called the Whole Earth Catalog, which was one of the Bibles of my generation. It was created by a fellow named Stuart Brand, not far from here in Menlo Park, and he brought it to life with his poetic touch. This was in the late 60s, before personal computers and desktop publishing, so it was all made with typewriters, scissors, and Polaroid cameras. It was sort of like Google in paperback form 35 years before Google came along. It was idealistic, overflowing with neat tools and great notions. Stuart and his team put out several issues of the Whole Earth Catalog, and then, when it had run its course, they put out a final issue. It was the mid-1970s, and I was your age. On the back cover of their final issue was a photograph of an early morning country road 
the kind you might find yourself hitchhiking on if you were so adventurous. Beneath it were the words, stay hungry, stay foolish. It was their farewell message as they signed off, stay hungry, stay foolish. And I have always wished that for myself. And now, as you graduate to begin anew, I wish that for you. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Rise and shine. At 6 a.m. and your hand can't make it to the alarm clock before the voices in your head start telling you that it's too early, too dark, and too cold to get out of bed. Aching muscles lie still in rebellion, pretending not to hear your brain commanding them to move. A legion of voices are shouting their unanimous permission for you to hit the snooze button and go back to dreamland. But you didn't ask their opinion. The voice you've chosen to listen to is one of defiance. A voice that says there was a reason you set that alarm in the first place. So sit up, put your feet on the floor, and don't look back because we've got work to do. Welcome to the grind. For what is each day but a series of conflicts between the right way and the easy way? 10,000 streams fan out like a river delta before you, each one promising the path of least resistance. Thing is, you're headed upstream. And when you make that choice, when you decide to turn your back on what's comfortable and safe and what some would call common sense, well, that's day one. From there, it only gets tougher. So just make sure this is something you want, because the easy way out will always be there, ready to wash you away. All you have to do is pick up your feet. But you aren't going to, are you? With each step comes the decision to take another. You're on your way now, but this is no time to dwell on how far you've come. You're in a fight against an opponent you can't see, but oh, you can feel him on your heels, can't you? Feel him breathing down your neck. You know what that is? That's you. Your fears, your doubts, and insecurities all lined up like a firing squad, ready to shoot you out of the sky. But don't lose heart. While they're not easily defeated, they are far from invincible. Remember, this is the grind, the battle royale between you and your mind, your body and the devil on your shoulder who's telling you that this is just a game. This is just a waste of time. Your opponents are stronger than you. Drown out the voice of uncertainty with the sound of your own heartbeat. Burn away your self-doubt with a fire lit beneath you. Remember what we're fighting for and never forget that momentum is a cruel mistress. She can turn on a dime or the smallest mistake. She is ever searching for the weak place in your armor, that one tiny thing you forgot to prepare for. So as long as the devil is hiding the details, the question remains, is that all you got? Are you sure? And when the answer is yes, when you've done all you can to prepare yourself for battle, then it's time to go forth and boldly face your enemy, the enemy within. Only now you must take that fight into the open, into hostile territory. You're a lion in a field of lions, all hunting the same elusive prey with a desperate starvation that says victory is the only thing that can keep you alive. So believe that voice that says you can run a little faster and you can throw a little harder and that for you, the laws of physics are merely a suggestion. Luck is the last dying wish of those who want to believe that winning can happen by accident. Sweat, on the other hand, is for those who know it's a choice. So decide now, because destiny waits for no man. And when your time comes and a thousand different voices are trying to tell you you're not ready for it, listen instead to that lone voice of dissent. The one that says you are ready, you are prepared, it's all up to you now. So rise and shine. I'm telling you, you can make whatever kind of money you want to make. You can have whatever you want to have. You can do whatever you want to do. Like, there are no limitations. And aren't you tired? There's some of y'all out there right now. You're tired. You know, somebody telling you when to come to work. Somebody telling you when to take lunch. Somebody telling you when to do a vacation. Somebody telling you what you can and cannot do. Some of us, we were born to fly. But what I'm telling you is, when you become the right person, what I mean by the right person is, once you identify who you are and you begin to separate yourself from the masses and you begin to see your individuality when you begin to see your talents when you begin to see your personal skills all right it's like this if you ever wore a suit from the store before that's one thing but if you ever got a suit tailored 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you ever got a tailored suit before, you know that it's different from going to buy a one size fits all suit and then having a suit that's tailor made. It fit different. The pants are different. The way you walk in it is totally different. Why? Because it's fit to you. And what I'm telling you is you need to have a tailor made life. When you were created, you were created with a specific purpose, a specific design. I don't care if you was born and you know your parents didn't claim you, you still special. I don't care if your mama went in your life, your daddy went in your life, you are still special. When you were created, you were designed to do what nobody else can do. And I'm telling you, when you become the right person, when you become the right person, what you do is you start separating yourself from other people. You begin to have a certain uniqueness. As long as you follow following other people, as long as you're being a copycat, you will never ever be the best copycat in the world. But you will be the best you could be. So I'm telling you, number one, number one, I'm telling you to define your value, right? Number two, I challenge you, listen to me, if you want to make more money, if you want to be more successful, if you want to have and do stuff you ain't never done before, number two, I'm asking you to invest in you. That's right, invest what? Number one, I'm asking you to invest time. I'm asking you to invest time in yourself. Some of y'all, you spend so much time with other people, you spend so much time trying to get people to like you, you spend so much time trying to fit in that you don't even know who you are. You know other people more than you know yourself. You study them, you know about them, you want to hang out like them, you want to be just like them and you know what you've invested so much time in them you don't know who you are i challenge you to spend time by yourself i challenge you to take yourself out there's some young ladies right now you fine you pretty you got it going on some brothers you handsome you suave you got swag but you know what your problem is you, you you've been in one relationship after another relationship and you ain't never been in a good relationship because you don't even know you you spend so much time taking her out you spend so much time trying to impress him you spend so much time buying her flowers taking her out to lunch you spend so much time calling him you don't even know who you are. You heard what I said. You've invested so much of your time in being liked by other people, being loved by other people, being appreciated by other people, that you don't even know who you are. And I challenge you to invest time in your own self. I challenge you to get to a place when people don't like you, it don't even bother you no more. Why? Because you're not concerned with trying to make them happy because you're trying to blow up. You're trying to get to the next level. E.T., I don't like the fact that you do this. I don't care. I'm not living my life for you. I'm living my life for me. I've been told it's a good idea to start a speech with a joke. Well, don't get your hopes up. I'm not here to tell jokes. I'm here to pick a fight. I'm here to pick a fight with second place. I have about as much patience for second place as I do for flies in my soup. But maybe you like flies in your soup. Maybe you like second place. Maybe you like that you gave it your best better luck next time, malarkey. They spoon feed runner-ups. Let me put it another way. If you think second place ain't such a bad deal, why don't you ask Napoleon how he felt about coming in second at Waterloo? Not so good. Not so good. And you can spare me, it's not whether you win or lose or how you play the game bullshit. I guarantee you whoever said that, lost the game. Moral of the story, come in first. Still want to hear a joke? Fine. Here's one for you. Knock, knock. Who's there? The guy that finished second. The guy that finished second who? It was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money. And so he went to this guru, right? And he told the guru, you know, I want to be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you want to be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach. So the young man got there at 4 a.m. He all ready to rock and roll, got on the suit, should have worn shorts. 
the old man grabs his hand and said, how bad do you want to be successful? He said, real bad. He said, walk on out in the water. So he walks out into the water. Watch this. When he walks out into the water, it goes waist deep. So he's like, this guy crazy. Adrian, like, I want to make money. He got me out here swimming. I didn't ask to be a lifeguard. I want to make money. He got me in. So he said, come out a little further. Walked out a little further. Then he had it right around this area, the shoulder area. So this old man, crazy. He's making money, but he's crazy. He said, come on out a little further. He came out a little further. It was right at his mouth. My man, like, I'm about to go back in here. This guy is mine. So the old man said, I thought you said you wanted to be successful. He said, I do. He said, walk a little further. He came, dropped his head in, held him down, hold him down. My man getting scratching, holding him down. He had him held down just before my man was about to pass out. He raised him up. He said, I got a question for you. He told the guy, he said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. I don't know how many of y'all got asthma here today, but if you ever had an asthma attack before, you short of breath, SOB, shortness of breath, you wheezing. The only thing you trying to do is get some air. You don't care about no basketball game. You don't care what's on TV. You don't care about nobody calling you. You don't care about a party. The only thing you care about when you're trying to breathe is to get some fresh air. That's it. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You gotta be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really wanna be successful, some days you gonna have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you gotta want it. You gotta go days without, listen to me, you gotta wanna be successful so bad that you forget to eat. Beyonce said once she was on the set doing her thing, three days had gone by, she forgot she didn't eat. Cause she was engaged, I never forget. Uh, when 50 Cent was doing his movie, I did a little research on 50, and 50 said that when he wasn't doing the movie, he was doing the soundtrack. And they said, when do you sleep, 50? Sleep. He said, sleep. Sleep is for those people who are broke. I don't sleep. He said, I got an opportunity to make a dream become a reality. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain. You already hurt. Get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me. I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money. But listen to me, you'll never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money. Because I got it in here. I'm here to change the way you think. 
And if I can change the way you think, I can't help but change what you do, can I? Let me introduce you to the concept of success. Ben Franklin was a pretty smart guy, and I want to start with a quote by him. If you do tomorrow what you did today, you will get tomorrow what you got today. You want to know what that means? The average American makes between 3 and 5% more each year. That's the deal. So it takes you 20 years to double your income in America as an average person. That's the mediocrity that we're stuck in in life. And then you meet people who have the uncanny ability to double their income in a year, to get promoted five times in a year. The ones that beat the system, the ones that conquer it. The difference between them and the ones that don't do that is that they wake up in the morning and they think differently. They understand that if I do tomorrow what I did today, I'm gonna get tomorrow what I got today. You want a bigger car? How about a nice house in Tahiti? We all want more friends, more stuff, more money, more security, more travel, more enjoyment. If you do the same thing tomorrow that you did today, you're stuck and it doesn't change. So the first thing I want you to think about today is I want you to wake up tomorrow and do something different and understand if you do the same damn thing, you're stuck. Guys, I'm standing in front of you incredibly successful. And it all started because I chose to do this. I'm here to change the way you think. And if I can change the way you think, I can't help but change what you do, can I? concept of success. If you do the same damn thing, you're stuck. I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. Cassius Clay goes into the record book with Corbett, Tunney, and Braddock as another who brought off one of the great upsets in the heavyweight history. It is befitting that I leave the game just like I came in, beating a big, bad monster who knocks out everybody and no one can whoop him. That's when that little Cassius Clay from Louisville, Kentucky came up and stopped Sonny Liston, the man who annihilated Floyd Patterson twice. He was going to kill me. But he hit harder than George. His reach was longer than George. He's a better boxer than George. And I'm better now than I was when you saw that 22-year-old undeveloped kid running from Sonny Liston. I'm experienced now, professional. Jaws been broke, been lost, knocked down a couple of times. I'm bad. Been chopping trees. I've done something new for this fight. I done wrestled with an alligator. That's right. I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Bad dude. Bad. Fast. Fast. Fast! Last night I cut the light off in my bedroom, hit the switch, was in the bed before the room was dark. Incredible. Fast! Incredible. And you, George Fullman, all of you chumps are gonna bow when I whoop him. All of you! I know you got him. I know you got him picked. But the man's in trouble. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Hell. Oh! Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You know, uh, you'll probably be about as good as I was. That's kind of the way it works, you know, and I, I, I was below average, you know, so, whoa. So you'll probably ultimately rank somewhere around there, you know, so I really, uh, you'll excel at a lot of things, just not this. I don't want you out here shooting this ball around all day and night, all right? All right. Okay? 
Let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. All right? All right. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves, they want to tell you you can't do it. You want something, go get it. Period. We didn't grow up uh, with the sense that where we were was where we were going to be. You know, we grew up with the sense that where we were almost didn't matter because we were becoming we were becoming right. something greater i want to represent an idea i want to represent possibilities i want to represent the idea that you really can make what you want one of my favorite books is the the alchemist uh paulo coelho and that's just i just believe that i, I believe that I can create whatever I want to create. You don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm going to lay this brick yeah. as perfectly as a brick can be laid. Yeah. And you do that every single day, and soon you have a and wall. Soon you have a wall. Greatness is not this uh, wonderful, esoteric, elusive, uh, godlike feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. Yeah. Period. It's that simple. I know who I am, and I know what I believe. I know who I am, I know who, what that's I believe. That's all I need to know. And that's all I need to know. So from there, you do what you need to do. You know, and I think what happens is we make the situation more complex than it has to because be. Because we're looking for complexity. There's got to be Absolutely. something complex to understand. It right? can't be that easy. No. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams, that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. I've, n I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous sickening work ethic you know while the other guy's sleeping i'm working while the other guy's eating i'm working there's no easy way around it no matter how talented you are your talent is going to fail you if you're not skilled mm -hmm. you know if you don't study if you don't work uh really hard and dedicate yourself to being better every single day mm -hmm. you'll never be able to communicate with with people with your artistry the, the way that you want so the only thing that i see that is distinctly different about me is I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. You might have more talent than me, you might be smarter than me, but if we get on the treadmill together, right, 
There's two things. You're getting off first, or I'm going to die. It's really that simple. I want my life. I want my, my work. Uh, my, my family, I want it to mean something. And it's like, it has, if, if you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. Right, yeah, I'm going to do it. It's done. It's already done. The second I decide it's done, it's already done. It's right. now we just got to wait for y'all to see. There's a, a redemptive power that making a choice has. You know, rather than feeling like you're at a effect to all the things that are happening, make a choice, right? You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. It's like it's water. It wants to it wants to move and go around yeah. stuff, you know. It takes such a desperate, obsessive focus. It's something that you can't fake. It was Franklin Roosevelt said, the only fear you have to fear is fear itself. Absolutely. Remember that? Absolutely. Yeah. I hate being scared to do something. And I think what developed uh, in, my, in my early days was the, the attitude that I started attacking things that I was scared of. I want to do good. I want the world to be better because I was here. You know, living with you, it hasn't been easy. People see me, but they think of you. Now with all this going on, this is gonna be worse than ever. It don't have to be. No, sure it does. Why, you got a lot going on, kid. Oh, well, my last name? That's the reason I got a decent job. That's the reason why people deal with me in the first place. Now I start to get a little ahead. I start to get a little something for myself, and this happens. Now I'm asking you as a favor, not to go through with this, okay? This is only gonna end up bad for you, and it's gonna end up bad for me. You think I'm hurting you? Yeah, in a way you are. That's the last thing I ever wanted to do. I know that's not what you want to do, but that's just the way that it is. Don't you care what people think? Doesn't it bother you that, that people are making you out to be a joke, and that I'm gonna be included in that? Do you think that's right? Do you? You ain't gonna believe this, but you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up to say to your mother, this kid's gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid's gonna be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching every day was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done.
Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always gonna love you no matter what. No matter what happens. You're my son, you're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't gonna have a life. Don't forget to visit your mother. I didn't want to just be a bodybuilding champion. I wanted to be the best bodybuilder of all times. Dig deep down and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Not what, but who. I'm talking about figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy. You have to think outside the box. That's what I believe after all. What is the point of being on this earth if all you want to do is be liked by everyone and avoid trouble? We have so many rules in life about everything. I say break the rules, not the law, but break the rules. I remember that after I was finished with my bodybuilding career, I wanted to get into acting. I wanted to be a, a star in films. Everyone had the same line that it can't be done. Just look at your body. You have this huge, monstrous body, it's overly developed. That doesn't fit into the movies. But, uh, you know, I didn't listen to all this. This were their rules. I was convinced I could do it. And then I got the big break in Conan the Barbarian. Trust yourself no matter how, what anyone else thinks. And there the director said, if we wouldn't have Schwarzenegger, we would have to build one. Then when I did Terminator, I'll be back. One of the most famous lines in the movie history, all because of my crazy accent. It just shows you never listen that you can't do something. Don't be afraid to fail. Anything I've ever attempted, I was always willing to fail. Don't be afraid of making decisions. You can't be paralyzed by fear or failure, or you will never push yourself. You keep pushing because you believe in yourself and in your vision. And you know that it's the right thing to do. Success will come, so don't be afraid to fail. I mean, how many times have you heard that you can't do this and you can't do that and it's never been done before? So pay no attention to the people who say it can't be done. If I would have listened to the naysayers, I would still be in the Austrian Alps yodeling. I would never have come to America. I always listened to myself and said, yes, you can. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. Work your butt off. I always believe leaving no stone unturned. No pain, no gain. When you're out there, partying, washing around. Someone out there at the same time is working hard. Someone is getting smarter and someone is winning. Just remember. So typical Tuesday morning, I was up spending some time reading, checking out some videos online. And I came across one that really hit home for me to the point where I wanted to make it the central theme for this week's video. And basically it was a short monologue by Robin Sharma. Uh, for those who don't know him, he's a sharp guy. He's got a lot of content on the internet. And what he said specifically that caught my attention was that to have the results that only 5% get, you need to have the guts to do what only 5% are willing to do. Uh, and this really got the wheels turning in my head because there are only so many ways you can articulate personal courage. You know, only so many ways you can talk about being fearless. But in my eyes, this puts it in the perfect context because it shines a direct light on the fact that success 
and overcoming social fears are directly linked. And I'm sure as you walk through this thought process, the concept will resonate with you. Right, 95% of people live for Friday. Immediate pleasures like TV, fast food, drinking, you know, these are things that are commonplace in society, in the world we live in. And I'm not, you know, standing here pointing a finger saying it's inappropriate. You know, my message goes deeper than that. What I'm saying is that if you want to be at the top in whatever it is that you do, right, or as Robin alluded to, the 5%, you have to sacrifice some of these pleasures that the greater population indulges in. And this is where the guts comes in. Because anytime you deviate from a norm, anytime you put yourself above a social standard, people do not like it. It becomes personal, which results in criticism, the cynical outlook, or the haters, as you know, we commonly refer to it today. And that's not easy. It's never easy walking one way when the larger group is walking another. That's not rocket science. But it's also why so few people can do it. Let's face it, if you're going to do something of significance, you need to expect negativity. People trying to tear down what you're building up, because like it or not, that's just how the world reacts. And the way I see it is that you can handle it a few ways, right? You can live your life in a way that conforms, you can shy away from that criticism, or just take it head on. You know, learn to accept it, thrive on it, because you'll never be able to please everybody. You know, so why not have the courage to do what you believe in? Have the guts to be called abnormal. Take it as a compliment. I've mentioned before that the way you perceive something makes or breaks you. Think about how powerful that statement is in this context. You can look at the negativity, the haters, as a reason to change your approach, throw the towel. Or you can see it as a sign of progress, an anticipated part of your journey. You can use it as a building block or a stepping stone for further success. Those are two polar opposite outcomes, by the way, all derived from how you choose to internalize the world around you. When you get through it all, you'll be happy you hung in. I can promise you that, that you had the guts to look past the norms and your surroundings, that you had the guts to be something different. I'm thinking about two men who are fairly successful, similar background, educated. They worked for a corporation for many years, and they were among many people that were laid off. Two guys who were very good friends. One went out looking for a job for several weeks, along with the other one, and they faced disappointment and rejection again and again and again. They couldn't find any work. One guy stopped. He became discouraged. He stopped going. He stayed home looking at television, became very argumentative and toxic with his wife, drinking beer, getting on the phone, talking to his other negative unemployed friends. And he just gave up. One guy said, it's not possible, it's over, I'm finished. I can't do it. I can't make it. He surrendered. I've faced rejection again and again. I'm not going anymore. There are no jobs out there. But this other guy, he felt that in spite of the no's and rejections, in spite of how bad the economy is, in spite of what the newspapers are saying, that it's possible that somebody somewhere will give me a job. He just kept going, thinking it was possible. What was the difference between the two men? Eyesight and mind sight. Eyesight is judging on what you see. Judging according to appearances. But mind sight is how you interpret what you see. The other guy kept looking for a job everywhere he could go. Every time he could get an opportunity. Kept asking people, networking, checking the newspapers every day. He went to a place and said, look here, I tell you what, if you can't hire me, and I know you can use my talents, abilities, and skills, I don't want to sit home and do nothing. Just, just let me do some volunteer work. You don't have to give me anything, all right? I just want to work. I want to be busy. 
Yeah, I said, okay, it's on you now, but don't, don't expect me to give you anything. It's okay. This guy came in and worked. He was the first one there. The last one to leave was the best employee there. About four weeks later, one of the top managers quit. They were looking for a replacement. Guess who they selected? This other guy. This guy who was volunteering his time. He got the job. There are losers and there are people who have not discovered how to win. And all they need is some coaching. All they need is some help and assistance, just a little support. I've often said that I wished people could realize all their dreams and wealth and fame and so that they could see that it's not where you're going to find your sense of completion. I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? That's all you have to figure out. Why not take a chance on faith as well? Not religion, but faith. Not hope, but faith. I don't believe in hope. Hope is a beggar. Hope walks through the fire and faith leaps over it. You are ready and able to do beautiful things in this world. As a child, my parents always told me you could be whatever you want to be. You could do whatever you want to do. But I didn't totally believe it. Yet I went out in the world and I carried myself and I held my head high and I stood there and I looked people in their eyes and I talked to people as if I was deserving of everything that this planet has to offer. Confucius said one time, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. It's time to change. It's time to walk down another street. What is your dream? I just want to ask you one question. What do you want to be remembered for? I hope you want to be remembered as a grinder. Someone who fights their way through all the things that they go through. Do not give up on your marriage. Do not give up in school. Do not give up on your goals and your dreams. You want to be an athlete. Grind. You want to open up that company, that organization. Grind. Nobody has to convince you to do what you have to do. You wake up early. You stay up late. You will do whatever you have to do to get where you need to go. Who gave me five grand when I was at Michigan State doing my program? I didn't get a, I didn't have no budget. But I didn't need a budget. I had a dream. I didn't need no help. The president never came and said to me, E.T., we're going to help your program for this institution blow up. The president never came, and I never quit. I never gave up. Why? Because it wasn't her dream in the first place to take care of a group of kids from the D. It was my dream. It was my goal. I don't expect you to do, I don't expect you to believe in my dream like I believe in my dream. And the problem with some of y'all is you want somebody else to support your dream. It's yours. I don't owe you a dime. It's your dream. If you want it to happen, get your butt up and make it happen. If you want it to happen, rise and grind. The warfare is in your mind. It's not in your checkbook. It's not in your savings account. It's not on your job. The fight that you got to fight is in your mind. There is always someone on your heels. There's always someone with talent. There's always someone hungry to take what you have. So where's that differentiating factor? It's within. It's in your why. If you're number one, you got to act like you're still number two trying to get there. These people are relentless. You are always replaceable in the office, on your roster spot. And every year I tell you, there's always going to be someone with more ability, with more privilege. So where's your competitive edge? It's up to you to muster it up and revisit your past where you weren't the top dog. Revisit that pain. 
Check yourself for that hunger and deliver it from the inside out. Outthink them, outsmart them, outwork them. I will not be outworked, period. Well, one of the things about life, you're going to get hurt. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to fail your way to success. But you've got to be willing to experiment. You've got to be willing to push yourself. You've got to be willing to challenge yourself by putting yourself in a perpetual state of discomfort. It's time to put your best foot forward. It's not about just putting in hours. It's about what are you doing with those hours you're putting in. Stay focused in accomplishing every single goal, every single day. We're trying to reach a pinnacle point. Nobody else can give you the effort that you need. Nobody tells you when you're successful. You know when you're successful. You know if you're putting in enough time to become great. You know when you're good. And there will be times when you feel like giving up. You just got to go one more mile. You got to go one more day. And I guarantee you'll find that motivation that you need. There's something that's built on the inside of you that man cannot give you. Your life, your health, your business, the situation that you're going through, everything that you've been through should push you to your destiny. Today is the day. Don't you know that you have the power to change anything? There is absolutely nothing in this world that can take away your main power as a human being. In any circumstance, in any situation, you can make a decision. You can decide how you will feel about something. You can decide how you will respond to something. You always have a choice. And it's 100% yours to make. However, most people continue to trade in their results for weak bullshit excuses. Understand this, no matter how many times you've failed, no matter how many times you've tried over and over again, no matter how many times you've been beaten down into the dirt and told that you're no good, you have the power to continue to move on. And as you already know, it's not about how hard you hit. What it is about is actually how much you can handle, how much pain, frustration, how many bad days after each other, how many times you can continue to move forward no matter what happens to you. Because regardless of whether you want to believe it or not, it's happening for you. Every challenge is an opportunity in disguise, begging for you to prove your worth, to prove your strength, and show the world that you're capable, willing, and deserving of what you want. Sadly, most people back down from those challenges. They give up, they see them as an end to the road. You have to learn to be better than that. You have the power of choice, so use it to drive on through. The amazing thing is that most of the success lies just beyond massive failure, pain and frustration. And so why would you ever want to give up just inches away from the success that you've been seeking? You want some great advice? Here it is. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. What does that mean to people now? What does that mean to most people? Nothing, absolutely nothing. It's been thrown around so much you don't even understand what it really means. Never give up is one of the most valuable things that you can carry within you and make part of you. Never give up is what separates winners from losers. And yet most people take it for granted and think it's something people just say. Well, maybe it's become that for most people, but for you, it has to become your golden rule for everything you do in life. You do not give up. No matter what happens, no matter how hard it gets, if you commit, commit fully. If you can't trust your own word, who will? It doesn't matter how great your intentions are or how nice of a place you're coming from. That's not what will get you through to the end. What will get you through is the power of choice. And more specifically, choosing. 
to no matter what happens, never ever give up. And I say that because it's the only way. Because you will get beaten down. Because you will fail. Because it will be hard, difficult and challenging. But if you want it bad enough, you will find the way. And, and understand that cu culture is brainwashing you all the time to desire completion. And uh, th this could be a 10 hour seminar on this one topic, how literally how society brainwashes you to think that there will be completion. Yeah, it's like, you know, there's no one trying to control you, but just the way that society works out, again, it's trying to be like, you know, like, like the classic example that you'll hear like in Zen or stuff like that is, like, you know, like, you know, you finish kindergarten, you go to grade school, finish grade school, go to junior high, finish junior high, go to high, high school, theoretically, go to college, get a job, get promoted, retire, and then the end is, you die. And uh, yeah, there, there is no, there is no completion. Because you have to understand, in the, in the world, sort of like a simple way of putting it, very simple, uh, over, overly simple, there's like the wolves and the sheep, okay? It's, again, it's a very overly simple way of putting it. And the sheep, again, in one way of looking at it among a million different ways you could, are the people who think there's gonna be completion. And they are given a script by the wolves who then eat them. Okay, that's sort of the gist of it. The reason why, uh, there's many different reasons why we all wanna be told what to do. Um, but, uh, and a lot of it could come down to that human beings are, we have hierarchy, we respond to hierarchy, we come from tribes. So there's many different reasons that we all wish that we could be told what to do, okay? But I'm gonna focus on one reason here in particular, what I'm gonna say to you, we're gonna put the microscope on this one particular reason. Uh, the reason why I think that we all wish that we could be told what to do is because we're all tired and we're all scared. Okay, I'm gonna say it again, we're all tired and we're all scared. And because we're tired and scared, we just wish somebody would tell us it's gonna be okay and give and just give us a fucking direction. Just please give me a fucking direction. The wolves eat the sheep. And you gotta realize that there is no completion. There's no fucking completion here. And the world is always changing. Life is always moving. From out of, out of disorder comes order. Out of order comes disorder. Societies thrive and implode. Relationships go awesome for a while and dissolve. Friendships are tight and end. Relationships between men and women are hot and passionate and can potentially end. Or if you follow certain rules, you can make them last longer. And certainly you do have a degree of control. And that is why if you can learn business, you should actually learn how good business works. If you learn pickup and relationships, you should learn how that works. And you can definitely stretch things out and create a robust structure, not a fragile structure that's always falling apart. When you're in a state of mind where you have complete self-trust to respond to any situation or to make decisions, to be a decision maker in the face of vagueness and ambiguity, to be a wolf, that is a higher level of consciousness. That's like a different vibrational frequency, as New Asian people will call it. You're more awake. And the reward is the state of mind and the person who you become. Realize that the wolves of the world simply embrace the ambiguity. Be the wolf, not the sheep. Realize that there never is a completion. What I think is the, is the hardest challenge of being a human being is that we're basically designed to be put into an environment that's very harsh and that's supposed to motivate us to do stuff. But the problem is now, if you don't do stuff for a long period of time, what's the consequences of that really? Nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. Nothing. And you get super duper unfocused, and then by the time that you need to be focused, you don't have the habits built up. You don't have that track record of habits built up, and you're fucked. The most fucked up thing about human nature is that we don't do more than we have to. People always think that they could do this or they could do that. But I call that the difference between would and could. They think they can do this, they think they can do that. They can't. They can't do it because they don't have the track record of little habits built up. Human brain can take on like two or three new habits at a time. That's it. That is it. 
But if you don't have that track record of having forced yourself to do it, you probably just won't. It's not that you couldn't, you just won't. What you could do and what you would do are two very different things. That's the thing, it's like, yeah, you could do this, you could do that, but would you? People talk and talk and talk. They could do this, they could do that. It doesn't happen. It's just a lot of fucking talk. Think in your mind of all the things that you could do with your life. All these possibilities, but the question is, will you do it? And that's the big difference, right? You have to put evolutionary pressure on yourself. You have to think of it like you are taking the evolutionary pressure and you're putting it on yourself. You are gonna make yourself a little bit uncomfortable every day. Now see, here's the key. You don't wanna make yourself so uncomfortable that you freak out. The good side of it is that if you do put that pressure on yourself, since most people don't, you can rise to the top pretty easily. And you wanna know something? It fucking sucks that we have to go get our teeth cleaned at the dentist once a year and that we can't just have good teeth without that. And it sucks that we have to monitor our diet to stay fit. And it sucks that we have to work hard to produce results. All that just fucking sucks. Why couldn't it be that like, you know, you could just be kind of like born and you just kind of like have the money given to you and the girls given to you and like all this shit. You don't have to do any of this shit. Maybe someday in the future, this is not even inconceivable. We could have a future where with genetic engineering, you're just jacked. You're just fucking jacked. And maybe their brains will be genetically engineered where even if they don't have all these harsh things happen to them or have to focus, that they could still focus anyway and not become spoiled little diva retards even without bad things happening to them because their brain will be genetically engineered to do that. And maybe that will happen someday. But that's not you. And it didn't happen yet. So until that is you, you have the other fate, which is you're going to have to hustle. That's your fate. That's just how it is, okay? That's how it is. You're going to have to actually apply yourself and challenge yourself. That's how it is because we're not genetically engineered yet. And we don't have a utopian society yet where shit's just given to you. And if you don't focus, you're going to be a broke little fucking loser in the dirt and you're going to eat shit. You have to produce results. There is no excuse for not producing results. You can, you or your mommy will give you a little pat on the head and go, you tried your best little fucking kid. Good for you, I love you anyway. But you're a grown man. So you have to produce results and there's no excuse. Get in the habit of again, like letting go of that little comfort cushion and just going down to ground zero. Being like, fuck it. If you're afraid of going out with like your hair not done a certain way, fuck it up on purpose for like a month, go out. If you're like, oh, I'm, I, I sense that I'm attached to pre-partying and pre-gaming with drinking, cut it out. Get rid of every little thing you just try to anchor your level of comfort in. Get rid of it. Be the guy who only relies on what? Himself. The guy who has the core confidence. You're not trying to find situational confidence. You're like, you know what? Just me. That's good enough. Doesn't matter what I look like. Okay? I'm the shit no matter what I look like at that moment in time. I'm the shit. Those are the, the norms. Those are the standards. It's my reality. It's my rules. Realize that all that external shit that you try to find comfort in, you ultimately don't need. Oh, what's the plan? Go against the plan. Learn how to deal with it. Learn how to deal with the situations. Become more comfortable dealing with situations where you don't know what's going to happen. Because that's what keeps it exciting as well. That uncertainty. You're not looking for... It's not like the boring thing where you're just going through the motions. As tempting as that sounds. As tempting as that fucking sounds. You have to be the number fucking one, okay? There is no number two. I choose to fight back! People just don't stick at it, and people don't want it bad enough. And if this was easy, everyone would be good. You want this shit, you gotta be competitive. You gotta be a go-getter. You gotta fucking hustle your ass off. Right now, it doesn't matter what your logistics are, doesn't matter what your job is, doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter you know, how much time you have, make it happen. How bad do you want this shit? You gotta fucking hustle. You gotta be competitive, you gotta be the best. 
You're gonna have to deal with a lot of bullshit and you gotta hustle your ass off. Get yourself in front of the camera, take the ball and find a way to make this work. I would tell myself, it's like, you know what? For me, the way I viewed life is like, you only live once, okay? You have all fucking eternity to be dead. Why not live doing something that you like versus, you know, even if you never make it, at least trying to achieve something that you like versus living something that you don't really like and just like going through like the comfort zone of society. It's very easy to just like get lost in like watching that, lost in like the fantasy, okay? Fuck the fantasy. It's like people don't want the truth. They're like, I don't want the truth. I like, this is good enough for me. They rationalize it. They fall in fucking excuses instead of just taking action, actually becoming that quote unquote superhero themselves. Letting go of all this shit. Like, I wish I could just let go of my problems, let go of my responsibilities, uh, you know, take action, just like dive in but people just prefer the fantasy. Like they know that they'll never do it. The fantasy shouldn't be fucking enough. Go for the fucking truth. Do the emotions want you to do that? Fuck no, they're like stay in place, stay in place. And that's why you have to think, like approach anxiety. That's why you have success barriers. That's why it holds you back. Don't listen to your emotions, okay? Really don't, realize that your emotions if you're not getting the results you want to get right now, they're not on your side, okay? Your emotions are against you. If you identify with emotions, you're fucked. You love, you've got to learn to like love the challenges, okay? Love the challenges and, you know, just enjoy it. Fucking enjoy it, okay? That's ultimately like the beauty of life. Take kind of like altitude on it. View it in the logical way and then just start taking right action. Okay, start taking right action. If you listen to your emotions, you're gonna remain the fucking same. Man up and just start taking action. If not, give up. If you're not man enough to take responsibility, give up. Your current results are really only a fraction of what you're truly capable of achieving. That you are far more talented, you have far more potential than your current reality. Why are you only living up to a fraction of your potential? Stop looking for the quick fix for success, happiness, and wealth. There's no shortcut. There's no cliff notes. There's no quick fix. You are going to walk through a minefield day in and day out of hard freaking work because success is earned one day at a time. Every day you lift your head up off the pillow. You're gonna decide whether that day you are a success or whether you are a failure. You're either moving forward or you're falling behind. One step at a time. Every step you take away from the bed as you walk through your day, you are either going in the direction of success or you're going in the direction of failure. Knowledge is not power. It is the potential of power, but it is not power in and of itself. Power is only created in what you do with what you know. Because knowledge is not something you can take to the bank. It is only action that produces results. Success is earned by hard freaking work. Hard freaking work. If you ask the circle of champions up here, how did you do it? How did you get to the top? How did you become so successful? Their answers are always going to be three words, hard freaking work. I don't think that as a participant in life, you cannot be committed. You're either committed to mediocrity or you're committed to greatness. You're either committed to being productive or you're committed to being non-productive. You're committed to being happy or you're committed to being unhappy. See, whatever you're doing, however you spend your time, 
That tells you who you are. So think about what it is you like to create in your life experience. Your whole life is nothing but the accumulated compound effect of the choices you've made up to this moment. Right now, we have the most valuable asset on earth on our side, time. But it's running out. And right now, you guys are sitting there. And to make that first step towards greatness is the hardest step. But there is one thing harder than that, my friend. It's later in life. As you look back on your life, the windows of opportunity has closed. Your ability is no longer present. And you think back that you could have been. The difference between a champion and someone who's forgotten is that a champion shows up. You want to make more money than you've ever made. You want to travel the world. I don't know. I don't know. You want to build your second home. I'm not sure what you want, but I need you to understand that you got to give some. You can't stay where you are and go where you're trying to go. The most important thing is this, to be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. When you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. If you want to make a difference, all you got to do is one thing. This is how you get started. You want something different? Listen to me. All you got to do is make a decision. That's it. And for those of you who've been making the wrong decision, all you got to do is make the right decision. But if you want to make a difference, make a decision. Your friends, family, and loved ones will be the first ones to try and talk you out of greatness. When you're ready to do something and try something new that's out of your comfort zone, that's out of your norm, it's always the one you're dating, the one you're married to, the one that's in your family, your friends in your immediate circle that will always try and talk you out of doing something special and significant. Do you know how many people have had visions, ideas, and huge career moves that they were about to make? And they allowed the word no to stop them from changing the landscape of their life and their family lives. So many people are afraid of rejection and the word no. It is the saddest shit I've ever witnessed in my life. I used to wait in parking lots in a city called Southgate, right near Watts. And there was a parking lot there that allowed you to take your shopping carts and put them in a certain section. And when you put your shopping cart in that section, 25 cents would come out. I used to be in that parking lot for eight hours a day. Thursday through Sunday, hustling money. I could have sold dope, I could have sold weed, I could have robbed people, I could have did all kind of dumb shit. Because when you in the hood and you fucked up, you trying to get money, any means necessary. Instead, what did I do? I was in the parking lot at a grocery store. And I was begging people for their shopping carts when they came out from shopping. And you'd be surprised at how many people told me no. And I was nice. I wasn't aggressive. I wasn't trying to rob them and steal their groceries. I would walk up to them. Excuse me, sir. Is there any way I can have your basket? No, no. No, no, no. No, no, I got it. I heard no more often than I heard yes. And I used to leave the parking lot at the eight, ten hours sometimes. With just a couple of dollars at a time after hustling quarters. So I no longer have fear of rejection. I no longer have fear of the word no. 
I've never, I, I no longer give power to the word no. I could care less about you rejecting me, disowning me, me having visions and ideas and you not seeing what I see. I see what's not there. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. I see what's not there. I have visions. My visions are bold and unapologetic. And if you don't get it when I show it to you, if you don't get it when I explain it, if you don't get it when I verbalize it and I go into details, guess what? It's your boss. Because guess what? These visions were God sent. And if visions are God sent, you don't ever give anybody the power over your vision. They don't belong to you. They were given to me from God. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how far-fetched it might appear to be. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But here's what I know. That that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible.